Hello everyone. Today we will discuss hepatosplenomegaly with uh, lymphadenopathy. As we all know, hepatosplenomegaly, the term implies enlargement of the liver and enlargement of the spleen. So, when hepatosplenomegaly occurs along with enlargement of lymph nodes, which is termed as lymphadenopathy, it signifies involvement of the lymphoreticular system. Now, what can cause hepatosplenomegaly with lymphadenopathy? It is very commonly encountered in clinical practice uh, and the common causes of hepatosplenomegaly with lymphadenopathy include infective causes, neoplastic causes and connective tissue disorders. Now, infective causes can be uh, grouped into viral infections common of which are infectious mononucleosis uh, caused by Epstein-Barr virus or the cytomegalovirus. It can be uh, uh, commonly seen in uh, malaria. It can be uh, seen in uh, disseminated tuberculosis. It can also be seen in uh, fungal infections like histoplasmosis. Now, among the malignant causes, Common causes include malignancies of the lymphoreticular system, which, uh, which are the lymphomas, which includes Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The leukemias, uh, which can be the acute lymphoid leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia, chronic lymphoid leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia. And uh, among the connective tissue disorders, uh, this can be caused by sarcoidosis, uh, systemic lupus, erythematosus and the like. Now, uh, when uh, a case of hepatos, in a case of hepatosplenomegaly with lymphadenopathy, it is very, uh, it's very important that you elicit the findings correctly. The liver, as we all know, occupies the right hypochondrium uh, and uh, the the liver is actually when it is enlarged it can reach up till right iliac fossa normally liver can be a two centimeter of liver can be palpable can normally be palpable below the right uh, sternal margin in mid clavicular line so whenever we uh, we palpate liver or whenever we uh, elicit hepatomegaly we have to always uh, express us it in terms of centimeters below right costal margin in mid clavicular line so the first step is to find out the mid clavicular line which corresponds to the middle uh, middle of the clavicle uh, and then uh, the line the perpendicular drop, the point at which the perpendicular drop from this line intersects the right uh, costal margin. So, once this point is marked, start palpating from the right iliac fossa. Now, why do you want to start palpate from the right iliac fossa? The dictum is that the organ always enlarges along its axis. So the axis of liver is an oblique axis along the uh, right costal margin and it is a, the axis is towards the right iliac fossa. So hence we need to keep our palm aligned to the axis in the right iliac fossa. Now ask the patient to take deep inspiration and expiration and with each breath with each breath advance advance your palm upwards till the right costal margin so when the liver is not palpable the right costal the right costal margin will abut your uh, palmar border while when the liver is palpable the border of the liver will hit your palmar border. Now, whenever you get a palpable liver, mark the point at which you are getting the palpable liver 
and make use of your tape to to uh, express how much how many centimeter it is palpable below the right costal margin in the mid clavicular line always describe the margin of the liver whether it is a sharp margin whether it's a rounded margin and the consistency whether it is soft firm or hard or if some nodules are palpable now sometimes the right lobe may not be palpable instead the left lobe of liver might be palpable the left lobe of the liver is usually occupies the epigastric region so the left lobe might be palpable it will be palpable in the epigastrium this happens in uh, a, a, a situations where left lobe is predominantly involved as in uh, certain situations of certain cases of hepatocellular carcinoma or uh, in case of uh, cirrhosis liver where there is uh, hypertrophy of the atro uh, hypertrophy of the left lobe of liver now coming to splenomegaly as we all know spleen is an organ which occupies the left hypochondrium it is not normally palpable unlike the liver the spleen is uh, has an average weight of 200 to 220 grams and is uh, no uh, it has to be enlarged uh, to volumes more than two to three times uh, its original volume to become palpable so normally its spleen is palpable uh, becomes palpable in the uh, left uh, hypochondrium so when the spleen starts enlarging it first enlarge postro superiorly so once it's uh, and then only it comes to uh, starts enlarging to area where it is normally palpable the the axis of the spleen is also uh, aligned towards the right iliac fossa so it's an oblique it enlarges in an oblique axis uh towards the right iliac fossa so for spleen also you have to start palpating from the right iliac fossa unlike the liver your arms uh, you, the fingers of your uh, palm has to be aligned along an oblique axis from the right iliac fossa and with each respiration you advance the hand towards the left iliac fossa till the splenic border touches you are the tips of your fingers now spleen normally occupies uh, the nine the intercostal spaces 9 to 11 so uh, there are three methods of palpation of spleen normally as we already discussed it is uh, it enlarges towards the right iliac fossa but in infants sometimes infants and children sometimes it can enlarge towards the left iliac fossa also sometimes the spleen uh, may uh, may not be may be too small and will be palpable just below the uh, right uh, left uh, costal margin so to start palpating for the spleen stand on the right side of the patient and then use your right hand place the palm of your right hand in the right iliac fossa with the tips of the fingers directed towards the right hypochondrium now before start uh, starting to palpation the your hands uh, your uh, palms have to be uh, made warm and it should not be wet uh, so you have to reassure the patient and uh, from uh, the right iliac fossa you have to advance your fingers in the axis of the spleen uh, enlargement of the spleen to the left towards the left iliac fossa and once the spleen tip becomes palpable touches your fingers mark the point and expresses it as centimeters below the left costal margin in mid clavicular line so in mild splenomegaly spleen might just be palpable up to 2 cm now when it's a splenomegaly where spleen is palpable uh, the uh, the measurement ranges from 3 to 7 cm it is called moderate splenomegaly and when it exceeds 7 cm it is called massive splenomegaly now uh, 
there is a technique of palpation of spleen when the spleen is only mildly enlarged this is called hooking method of palpation in this you have to uh, ideally st uh, ideally use the hooked your hooked fingers uh, you have ideally you have to stand on the right side of the patient facing the uh, uh, the uh, foot of the patient and use the hooked fingers to insinuate the area just below the left costal margin and when the patient takes breath uh, deep inspiration spleen will come the tip of the spleen will come and touch your fingers now uh, when the spleen when there is a moderate to massive splenomegaly as when it happens with uh, situations like chronic myeloid leukemia malaria Kalazar, then the anterior border of the spleen will be very well palpable and the, the splenic nodes which is present will be very well palpable. In addition, sometimes a splenic, uh, sometimes uh, you can, uh, sometimes a tenderness can be elicited as in splenic abscess, uh, which is very common in infective endocarditis also. So, uh, sometimes in a massive splenomegaly, you can auscultate a splenic rub in addition to this. So, whenever you, uh, whenever hyperosplenomegaly is encountered, it is very essential to look for uh, lymphadenopathy. It can be cervical lymphadenopathy where uh, the lymph nodes may be present in submental uh, or in the upper cervical middle cervical or a posterior anterior cervical middle cervical or posterior cervical areas or in the axillary uh, areas or in the inguinal areas so uh, whenever the point to remember is that whenever hepatosplenomegaly with lymphadenopathy is present it signifies a pathology of the lymphoreticular system and uh, the, it is very essential to elicit in the the extent to which liver and spleen are enlarged and uh, also uh, to describe the group of the lymph nodes which are enlarged and commonly the pathologies which involve these uh, lymphoreticular system are grouped under infective uh, malignant and connective tissue disorders thank you